You know, they say history is written by the victors. This is incorrect. History is written by those who write the history books. <laughs> history is written by the historians. So, if you're the guy writing the history, then you get to, to decide what the history is. Uh, and nothing could be a better example of this than the story of Billy Mitchell and Roy Shilty and uh, all of these classic arcade game champions, quote unquote champions. Um, I, I recently got into watching some of these documentaries. For instance, this one here, Billy Mitchell, the Perfect Fraud Man documentary, the King of Kong documentary, Chasing Ghosts. If you haven't seen these and you're nostalgic about classic arcade games, video games, if you grew up in the 80s like I did, video games were all the rage. I mean, it was a, a new technology. It was just a really strange thing. Video games are incredibly popular today, um, probably for all the same reasons and, and a lot more reasons. The technology is just so much more advanced. But I remember being, oh, you know, a young child in the late 70s, the first video game that I came across, probably seven or eight years old, was Pong. Uh, one of my neighbors had bought this console from Radio Shack. They could plug directly to their TV set, and all of a sudden we could play this game on the TV. And it was just amazing that here's something that, uh, you know, I watch, but I never really have any control over. And now suddenly I do, and, and, and we could play games on it, and it was so cool. I remember just playing that for hours with my next-door neighbor friend and <laughs> and then after that, you know, the vector graphics game started to come out. I would see at the skating rink, you know, when I'm nine and ten years old. Uh, there was a game, I think it was called Space Wars, with two little spaceships that two players would control. And they'd fly around and this little star in the middle of the screen and they would try to shoot each other. It was really simple. But, uh, but just cool, you know. And then, of course, asteroids and space invaders and then Pac-Man and, and eventually Donkey Kong. All of these games, pretty much anybody that knows anything about classic video games has heard of most, if not all of those. Um, one thing that I've learned is in my, in my life is that if you take something, no matter how mundane it is, and you keep score, you're going to have this group of autists, <laughs> these nerds, or, um, uh, you know, savants, I guess, <laughs> that are going to compete to be the best. I mean, no matter how mundane the task. I played a lot of Donkey Kong as a kid. I put way too many quarters uh, spent way too much of my lunch money on video games, you know, uh, hours in the arcades, plopping those quarters in, allowance money, anything that I could scrounge out, up from the cushions in the couch. But even still, you know, by the time I reached 15, 16 years old, discovered girls and cars and driving and you know, video games kind of really weren't that important to me anymore. And I didn't realize, I mean, these guys are basically my age. Maybe they may be a couple of years older than me in some cases. Um, there was a group of guys, you know, that were just video game fanatics. And Billy, Billy Mitchell and Roy Shilty are just a, among those and the and the controversies <laughs> that surround uh, you know these high scores these world record high scores 
boy, the 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 the, the plots thicken to an extent that you you wouldn't believe. Um, so you know, let me sum up what I've learned. Okay, let's talk about Roy Shilty first. Roy Shilty is is this guy who evidently they, he goes by the name Mister Awesome. Um. A jealousy involved with this video game stuff. I mean, these guys who play video games, I mean, let's face it. I mean, they, they couldn't get laid in a whorehouse with a hand. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that's Roy. So Roy's claim to fame is he's the world record holder in a game called Missile Command. And if you remember Missile Command growing up, it was, it was one of the cooler games. It was, uh, it was hard. It was a tough game to get good at, man. No, there's no... No lie, you know, this guy, Roy, got evidently, you know, uh, over a million points, like 1.6 million points back in 1985 on this game. So he was, you know, playing the hell out of this game. And I don't want to take anything away. You know, I've tried to, to go, well, you know, I don't, I'm, I don't want to take anything away from these guys. I mean, they've, they've achieved things, right? But really, what have they achieved? They've stood in front of. Uh, an arcade game for hours and hours and hours of their lives to try to just master pushing buttons and, and rolling a trackball around. And I, you know, I mean, we all have to choose how we want to spend our lives. That's not particularly some way that I would want to do, uh, you know, spend the majority of my life, but, um, you know, li life is what you make of it. So, I mean, it is an achievement, but come on, really, the, the amount of drama that goes on. But anyway, so Roy's situation is uh, because he scored this uh, high score back in 1985, I think, on this Missile Command game, uh, there wasn't a whole lot of objective documentation about it, you know, so... Back then, not everybody had cell phone cameras. Video videography wasn't a thing. You know, you couldn't. It was tough to 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 to, to document <laughs> things. Now they make these guys video the the game, the high score, the board, the electronics, all kinds of stuff in order to prove. Or it's got to be done. You know, with a, a certified referee standing over your shoulder. I mean, it's just, it's just gotten really ridiculous because a lot of guys cheat at this stuff, obviously. But the thing with Roy and Missile Command, if you, you remember, and I didn't think about this because I, I didn't play Missile Command a lot, but I remember it. I didn't think about it until I watched the documentary or this uh, Mr. Awesome Roy Shilty uh, talking about how he got ripped off out of his, his scores. Um, Missile Command had two different size trackballs. They came in different versions, right? You had a stand-up arcade machine and you had a, uh, what do they call it? A cocktail table type machine. And, and, you know, you had several different versions, like four different versions of the machines. And the machines came with different size trackballs. You had like a four inch trackball in certain machines and you had a two and a half inch trackball in other machines. So obviously using a smaller trackball, it's going to be a little bit harder if the cursor on the screen, you know, travels at the same speed as if you had a larger trackball. So there was a dip switch setting in these machines that could be manipulated to speed up or slow down the cursor. In the ones with the big trackball, then the cursor speed would be set on slow. And on the ones with the smaller trackball, the cursor speed should be set on high. So then along comes this other guy at some point, you know, the high score is... The high scores are consistently, you know, 1.5, 1.6 million points on this game. This guy comes along and blows it out of the water with like 4.4, 4, 4 4.5 million points on Missile Command. And then they say, well, you know, he obviously had the trackball setting set on the high speed for a game with a big trackball. You know, that, and that's the, that was the assertion. And so because of this... The uh, governing body that uh, <laughs> that uh, keeps track of high scores, Twin Galaxies, it's called, uh, just went ahead and blended all the scores together. You know, that, so that setting can be on whatever you want it to be, is because they don't know what it what it was on for all of the people who have submitted scores across the history of Missile Command. Um, 
And so this guy, Roy Schilte, feels like he got cheated out of his high score. And he kind of did. I mean, his argument is, is completely legit. Uh, there should be a differentiation, right? But, uh, you know, you could also make the argument, well, you know, if you're that good, then put the, get yourself one with a big track ball and put it on high speed and go and beat the other guy. Let's just drive, you know, just drive the records through the roof or whatever. Um, and then there's all the drama surrounding Billy Mitchell. I mean, you, you can find, uh, so much of that. (laughs) <laughs> on your own. I'll just give you the gist of it. So Billy Mitchell um, was a prodigy, I guess you might say, uh, a uh, video game prodigy from the time that he was young in the 80s. On And uh, his, his games were Pac-Man and uh, Donkey Kong. So he's he's credited with getting the first perfect Pac-Man score. Evidently, there's an end to Pac-Man. You get to a point where the, the screen just becomes, you know, a jumbled mess of gibberish, and uh, and the ga- and you you know you eat a few a few dots on that screen, and then you die, and then you and then it's over. And uh, there's another guy. I forget what his name is. Another kid did this back in the. Uh, his, I think his name is also Billy, Billy Basti or something along those lines, who 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 got the perfect pack, evidently got the perfect Pac-Man score back in the early 80s. <laughs> but uh, Billy Mitchell managed to manipulate uh, things because, the, like I said, the governing body is, uh, is uh, you know, there's two groups, there's twin galaxies which is the experts and the re- supposed to be the experts and the referees. And they, uh, and they just uh, guide or provide the information to the Guinness book of world records on this stuff. So Guinness defers to twin galaxies or who the world record holder holders are. And Billy Mitchell has been one of the guys uh, funding and evidently had ownership has ownership interests in Twin Galaxies since the beginning of this. So you know it goes back to what I was saying. Um, history is written by those who write the history books. Well, in this case, uh, you know the victor would be that Billy Basty guy, and uh, and the guy writing the history books is 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 Billy Mitchell and his. His Walter Day and his group at Twin Galaxies, and so they write themselves into the into the record books. Um, even though there's tremendous doubt on the uh, on whether or not his uh, Billy Mitchell's first perfect Pac-Man score is legitimate or not, there's legal <laughs> battles going on over. Other things, he, he holds a Donkey Kong record, first first kill screen in uh, in Donkey Kong, and first uh, first Donkey Kong score over a million points. Um, yeah, and so there's uh, significant evidence that uh, that he did that first million score on Donkey Kong on an emulator. If you know what an emulator is. Uh, you can actually go onto your computer and play these games nowadays, and uh, you couldn't do that back in the '80s. And there's, you know, it's a different record, right? They they split the records up. They differentiate differentiate the records because there's ways to cheat on emulators that you can't do on a on a traditional stand up machine. There's a lot. This is it's just a real interesting story, you know. Um, but I mean, just the obsession, <laughs> just the obsession with these video game players is crazy, man. These are just a bunch of aging nerds sitting around, um, arguing <laughs> over <laughs> who who is actually the record holder on this game or that game and. Yeah, so 
<laughs> it's funny. It's very, very interesting. If you haven't had an opportunity to, to dig into that, something that I've been looking at a lot lately. All right, that's about it. Y'all have a good one.